Hey sixth graders, so this video has to do with the poem Jabberwocky that you guys are supposed to be reading on Tuesday. And Jabberwocky is kind of another silly, made up story by Lewis Carroll. And it's in the form of a poem. And so we're going to talk about a few different things that people use in writing, specifically in poems, but they use it in other things too, to make sentences and words and sounds more interesting. So I told you guys you had to read page 377 in your workbook so you understand this part. You do not have to fill out the chart that's there or answer any questions. I just want you to read it so you understand what these things are. And I'll kind of go over it quickly in this video. So we have three things we want to talk about. The first one is onomatopoeia, which is a crazy word, and it's really hard to spell, so I'll never ask you to do that. But an onomatopoeia is a word that we use as humans to mimic a sound. So for example, bang, right? That's a sound. And if we were actually thinking of a real bang, right? Like if I hit the table, I can't make that sound with my mouth. I can't replicate that. So the closest I can get is to make up some sort of word or sound that I would then say that sort of sounds like this. So I say bang, but it's not exactly the same. It's just what we do as humans. Kind of like how if we we're thinking about the sounds animals make, we can't make the exact same sound, but we can sound sort of like them, right? Like a cow who's mooing. Sometimes it doesn't sound like he's exactly, he or she is exactly saying moo, but we can sound sort of like them. <coughs> Excuse me. And so we can find words that work for us to make those sounds, okay? Sometimes other ways that we can make poems or stories more interesting is to use patterns, right? Patterns make things easier to follow, right? Like rhyming. If we rhymed at the end of every line, we kind of know it's a poem because it's got a rhythm and a pattern like a song almost. So alliteration is one other sound device you can use to make it sound interesting. And that's where they use the same sounds at the beginning of a word. And they use multiple words that have that. So for example, same sounds, that's alliteration because it starts with S and then the next word also starts with S. So an example of one I could use would be, uh, the tiny tentacle reached out and touched me in the tide pool, right? Those are all T's, tiny tentacle touched tide pool, right? All those start with T and it's at the beginning of the word. And when they go together, it's more interesting than just saying like, I saw a squid, it was in the water. It was cool, right? If I wanted to make it sound more interesting, I can put together patterns that sound uh, similar. And so Lewis Carroll does that sort of stuff a lot to make it interesting instead of just talking about this strange animal, this strange beast, right? And then the other thing, that he uses is consonants, which is where instead of having the same sound at the beginning, you have the same sound at the end. And it's almost like a rhyme, but they're gonna use different vowels. So the example they give you on page 377 is dawn goes down. So dawn and down, dawn is like when the sun comes up in the morning, right? And D-A-W-N, it ends in the letters W-N. Down also ends in W-N. And they both start with the letter D. The only difference is that Don has an A and Down has an O. So it sounds almost like a rhyme, but it's not quite like a rhyme, but it still makes our ears interested to listen to it. Instead of just saying, well, now the sun's in the sky. It's time for us to be awake, right? You could say the dawn is down and now it is time for us to start the day, whatever, right? So using patterns like that, make it more interesting. And as you guys write poems this week, these might be helpful to you to make your poems more interesting instead of just, I wrote a poem, it's really cool, the end, right? So keep these in mind as we're working this week and if you have questions, you can ask me.